got some coffee this morning. I know the U.S. Go Congress ended over a week ago, but I took some travel detours and actually didn't get back into town until very recently. But now that I'm back, man, do I have a lot of Go content to share with you guys. And so we're going to start today. Um, I've already got my, let's see, my 2022 U.S. Go Congress shirt on. I got my, my 30Q badge. I am so ready. Before we dig into today's game, let's talk a little bit about what the Congress was like. And I did upload a very short clip of day one, and I apologize for not following up on that at all. Um, Hopefully, it just gave you a little bit of taste like you were there. But, you know, this Go Congress, as you uh, are probably aware of, uh, or maybe, here, let's start with this. Maybe you don't know what the U.S. Go Congress is. It's the largest gathering of Go players in North America. Uh, held annually in a different location every every year. Usually, any the attendance can be anywhere between about 300 and 600 players. That's pretty typical. This year was significantly reduced. And I think in terms of like actual players, I think we had closer to around 200 or low 200s. So it definitely felt, you know, and, and, and I don't want to disparage like any of the people there because I had a great time. Everyone who went had a great time. But it definitely felt smaller and a little bit more... Uh, I don't want to say cloistered, that's not the right word, but, you know, tighter. It, it, it had a different feeling to this Go Congress being the first in-person Go Congress since the pandemic. As you can see here, this is just uh, the team, uh, the volunteer team that the AGA uh, employs to to put the whole Congress on, and they are just burning through COVID tests. Um, as you can see, they're all set up on the right. These COVID tests, uh, you know, everyone had to test on going in, and then other people would request tests throughout the week. Um, I think upon entry, I think there were, they, they kind of changed the numbers a little bit. It kind of went up and they backed it off because they double counted someone. But I think there were three people who tested positive, um, who basically had to quarantine or go home, including my friend Jim Cunningham. I'm so sorry, Jim. He drove there from Texas. Uh, all the way up into the way up into the mountains in Colorado, got his COVID test positive result and got a PCR to confirm and then basically drove around and went back to Texas. Uh, anyway, um, during the Congress, it seemed like there were a couple other cases that, that came to fruition, um, though I can't actually give you the data. For the most part, you know, for the hundreds of people in attendance, including those, you know, 200 players plus, you know, about, about maybe a hundred other non-players, you know, uh, family members and such, they, uh, you know, it, it, it overall felt safe for the most part. Like, I just want to acknowledge that. And so good work to the Congress team. I did have one of my one of my friends uh, write to me afterwards saying he came down with COVID immediately afterward. I haven't heard too much of that, but I did know that also happened. Confirmed. Okay. So anyway, yes, post first post-pandemic go Congress. It's going to be a little bit different. <laughs> Uh, Here's a shot of the main playing hall. Uh, Again, if you watched the previous video uploaded, you can see a little video footage of this type of site. Again, a little bit smaller than usual. Uh, I think they only set up 100 tables here and another, was it 16 tables in the strong players room? Something like that. Um, So not, or I should say 100 boards, not 100 tables. 100 boards. Um, So again, a little bit smaller. It just felt tighter. And that's not a bad thing. But man, do I have a lot of Go friends, and man, there were parts where I looked around and, and missed them. And so, uh, that's one of the great things about the Go community in the U.S. is that, you know, it's not this sprawling community where there's there's just so many people you can't possibly know anyone. It's actually kind of small enough that you can you will act you can actually meet uh, a, a significant percentage of the players and feel like, oh wow, this really is my community, which is amazing. Um, the venue was held in Estes Park, Colorado. This is about 8,000 feet elevation. Yes, it did take a little, <laughs> a lot of people, including myself, a day or two to sort of get acclimated to the high elevation. Um, like you'd just be walking around, walking up a hill, and you'd be like, "Oh, this is, this is, this is a hard hill." <laughs> um, but 
I'm happy to say at least my body did acclimate it, acclimate to that elevation pretty quickly, and I felt pretty good. Um, this is a shot I took right after a, a rainstorm. We just have random thunderstorms come through all the time, which was a little bit of a surprise. I didn't realize how, f- like, it was a daily occurrence almost. Um, but, you know, the, the venue is absolutely beautiful. You're just surrounded by mountains. Like, I, in terms of just pure aesthetics, I don't know if the Go Congress has ever been in a more beautiful location. Uh, than up in the mountains in Colorado. Uh, here's another shot. You can climb all these mountains all around. There were the day off hikes. You can go up there yourself. And, uh, you know, this is what you're looking at. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> you, you take a hike and this is the view. Isn't that amazing? Uh, so, the game we're going to talk about today is against another very popular internet Go personality, Sean Ray. Here's a shot of us playing. Sean actually live streamed the game. You can see his little phone there. Uh, so, I'm really excited to go through that with you. Uh, there's me looking exasperated. <laughs> uh, but it was certainly a very memorable game, and Sean and I talked about it at length afterward, and so I can I can try to best represent some of his thoughts during the game as well as my own. And, you know, I, I, <laughs> this, might, this might be a slightly longer review video. You know, I've been kind of hitting about the hour mark for like half hour of game time and then half hour review for my most recent videos. This game is going to, this video is going to be all review plus a little vacation picture slideshow, which is what you're getting right now. Um, <laughs> but these games were played with, let me think, uh, yeah, 90 minutes per side, so an hour and a half on the clock, plus five 30-second Biyomi. So these are slow games. And the majority of my games uh, took all, either just about or, or at, you know, three hours. <laughs> uh, the games would start at 9 a.m., and generally I would, I would expect to finish up right around noon, so these are slower, more serious games, and unlike most of the games I play on my channel, which are just online and kind of, I'm looking more for fun than serious moves, these are try-hard games, and so I think it's worth the time to really investigate them. All right, you may be wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses, and that brings us to our last photo of my vacation slideshow. On the last day of the tournament, I woke up, and about 15 minutes before uh, round the round the final round started... I put my glasses on my face and they just snapped in half and the titanium frame just just broke. And then in my trying to fix my glasses, I actually broke them more. And so I for for about a day or two I was walking around with just just a scotch tape contraption on on my head trying to keep them on. And eventually I just popped out the lenses and I taped them inside a pair of sunglasses. It's my unique invention and this is what I've been wearing ever since. I did order a new pair um, but they haven't come in yet. Uh, very frustrating being a heavily, heavily farsighted person, not really having a functional pair of glasses. Um, if anyone wants to know, my prescription is uh, the di- I'm over like minus six diopters or something. That's how blind I am. It's a, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, if, you, if, you, if, you can, if you can beat that prescription, you know, leave a comment. I, 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 I relate to you, I, my, my farsighted brethren. Um, Anyway, that's why I'm wearing the sunglasses. It's not to look douchey. It's to... <laughs> it's it's very functional for me at this point. So please forgive the uh, the glasses. All right. So anyway, this is a game against Sean Ray. Uh, Sean Ray, like I said, is a popular Twitch streamer. You can find his channel there. He live streamed the game. Um, I know he... I, I know... I, don't, I think if you're a subscriber... I'm not sure if it's still up, but I know you could have actually watched the game live if you were a sub, um, which is amazing. And, uh, you know, I want to thank him for doing that. And, you know, we just had a great game. So in this game, uh, I am white and I I got it in AI Sensei and I, and I've been using AI Sensei extensively throughout the week of the Go Congress. It's just so useful to be able to, to record my game at the table and immediately upload it to this, you know, server somewhere who's, that's going to run a, you know, thousands and thousands of playouts. This is on the 10,000 playouts pro mode, um, as far as the AI strength is concerned, um, so I could finish the game, upload it. I could talk to my opponent for a little while. I could go to lunch. And by, even by the time I was in the lunch line, it was done processing, uh, it's, it's analysis. And while I was eating lunch, I could review the game. And I did that for all of my games. Like I, I, these, again, these are serious games and I took the time to, to really think of them as such. And I want to share a lot of that with you. So the next few videos, if you want like some very in-depth, uh, you know, high, ana- high level analysis into an insight into tournament go games uh this is the this these are the videos for you (laughs) if you want me to drink wine and play silly moves eh, 
Pro- probably not the videos for you. Come come back in a few weeks after I after I work through all these games. This does not have alcohol in it. This is just coffee, no Baileys, no Irish cream. Okay. Serious mode. All right. So anyway, in this game, I am white. As you can tell, also often, if you don't know this, because uh, again, many of you played Go online and don't and don't know like how Go works, like when you play it on a real board, which is amazing. Amazing. Um, most of you should already be able to tell without even looking at the names or the colors or anything. Just based on the first two moves, you should be able to tell that I'm white, because in uh, at least at least we'll say traditional Japanese etiquette, go it is customary for black to place their stone in the top right corner away from them. And so you can see that I recorded this game from my perspective, which means Sean uh, indeed played a you know the quote unquote polite move in the top right corner. There's nothing saying you have to do this. This is a, this is just a you know hundreds if not thousands of years of Japanese tradition. Um, to place your first stone in the upper right corner. Given the board's symmetrical, it doesn't really matter which corner you play. Um, but when black plays, in the, when you see a game record and black plays in the lower left, it's like 90 plus percent likely that the game that you're reviewing is was recorded by white. All right, so I'll play a few moves here. Also, I might turn off a little bit of the graph here. Uh, okay, there we go, just to, to give you a little bit better of a, of a layout. Or, or less less distracting, let's put it that way. And on move five, uh, Sean plays this shocking move. This was to- totally shocking to me because this is a tournament. This is serious. All the players have been studying all AI everything, and Sean plays this very intentionally traditional Shimari enclosure. And this is not bad. Like the AI, I think, the yeah, the AI says it's a 02 point loss compared to the other opening moves that it deems better. That's not, that's not noteworthy. That is, that is not, <laughs> that, that is not a mistake <laughs> by, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it's still shocking to me. So I kind of t- had to take my time on the next move and, and was like, okay, Sean seems to have a plan in the world of where everyone's playing robots. Like here it is, Sean representing humanity. So I, I kind of was like, okay, all right, I'm game. And I was like, I'm going to fully embrace the robot and played large, played large Shamari. Um, of course, on the next move, then Sean goes, kind of reverts back to robot style. And after the game, we talked about, uh, we, we talked about this a little bit and he had, this very, let's say he was very concerned with the macro strategy of this game, perhaps more than, than any of the micro. Like, like I, th- I think actually his, and when I say macro, micro, I mean like the overall board state, like the overall Fuseki, the overall direction of play versus the individual tactics, the Tesuji, the shapes. Um, I think, I think Sh- Sean in general is very strong with, with Tesuji and shapes and, um, and, and reading and, and those sorts of things. And so it was interesting for me to hear him both really dive deep into the the grand strategy of the game as well as the struggle with it um, because i think i think in the, end of the game, at the end of the game that was his immediate takeaway is that he kind of struggled with the overall strategy because he came to this game thinking i'm going to take a bunch of points and then i'm going to just dive into the middle he's like i just want to control the middle that is he had a strategy um from from the start for this game and i know for me uh, my strategy for this game was take the best deal it was it was whatever my opponent is offering, like, do not force anything, do not have a will, do not have a strategy. And so we got to see both those strategies play out, which was, which was awesome. So look for that as we, as we go through the rest of this game. All right. So in, in accordance with Sean's strategy, the idea is take a bunch of territory and then control the center. Like that's, it's a two-step, that's it. That's all he wanted to do. And you can see that the lower left, Shamari, you can see it again here with the upper right. Uh, we're playing out a Joseki, and we play this flying knife variation that uh, is very popular right now. I think everyone is scared of it. It's dangerous. It's it's. I, I'm not going to recommend it. <laughs> like like this Joseki uh, is is not recommendable. Normally, white should just play here, let white play there, and then play a play a move somewhere down the right side of the board. But no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, and, and part of the reason why I play this just like is because Sean played so traditional over here, um, and I was like, well, maybe, maybe there's a chance that uh, he's playing so traditional because he doesn't want to play any robot stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna play all the robot stuff, right? I'm gonna take whatever my opponent's offering. Uh, so, okay, uh, here, yes, there's a little bit, 
um, of a loss here. I think it's bigger to fix this cut, as you're going to see later. <laughs> um, but I played here. Uh, Sean cut immediately, played the correct move, and then he tanukied here. And this is this is the first big mistake of the game. Uh, this is... <sighs> It's, it's just bad timing. <laughs> um, and this is a little bit of, of like traditional go thinking. Like I, I can understand how he makes this mistake. Um, especially when you think of his strategy as take a bunch of territory and then control the center. Well, running out of stone to fight does not fit into that grand strategy. And so that's why there's this little unhappy face here. Like the AI is like, you have to, you have to make use of this stone now immediately. And Sean's like, no, I'm going to take territory. <laughs> and so he continues here. Um, but this push is very good. Uh, this push, if, uh, you know, white does anything like this, this Hane is exquisite. There it is. The AI comes up with it. And you can see that, um, white cannot tanuki at all because these two stones is captured shortage of liberties. Like this push, very powerful, need to play it. Um, at least this, um, if not something else over here. So wait, this is, this is the first, um, loss of the game, I guess, like, like, or, or like, like significant point loss. You can see, uh, uh, actually, yeah, you can see my head's, my fat head's not in the way or my sunglasses. Um, you can see it's actually pretty even the AI favors white a little bit at the beginning just because Comey is large. Um, but, uh, it was very even until this moment. And now all of a sudden white gets a little bit of a, of a momentum here. Um, this makes an L plus one group. So I take advantage of that immediately. And Sean makes another mistake. Sean also knows his life and death, knows his shapes, knows that an L plus one group is dead if your opponent gets another move. So he fixes it immediately, but he doesn't have to do it yet. He can actually harass this more first. And I think if I just turn on the AI suggestions and Nope, if I, sorry, if we turn those on, you can see all the different ways that the AI wants to sort of harass over here first um, before making life. And when you just make life, eh, you may not, like, I may not respond the same way, right? For instance, if, if you make life here, and let's say white does something, and then now black peeps here, well, black is really peeping or is threatening to, to capture these two stones, <laughs> essentially. White doesn't care about those two stones anymore. Black wasted a move playing in here. And so you have to, the timing of these, these annoying moves, right? Asking question moves is really important. If you just submit and then try to ask questions later, why is, what, your opponents can be like, we're not talking about that anymore. Like, yeah, sure. You can have that. You already, you, this, this move becomes irrelevant. This is like passing. It's actually worse than passing because, well, well, depending on your rule set, it's worse than passing because um, you played a stone in your, in your own territory. All right, so anyway, uh, I'm going to be flipping back and forth between that, I think, a lot. So, so Sean makes two mistakes kind of back-to-back -back here, and you can see that the score graph immediately favors me just because, uh, the, you know, black is very submissive and small, right? This feels very good for white. Um, by the same token, I don't really clean this up at all. Like, I kind of leave this stone here for much too long, <laughs> um, and that's my mistake. I should... I should play in such a way to make sure the stone doesn't become an issue. Uh, black plays a kick, which is very popular. And I make a base in the bottom, again, just separating up the, the black bottom. Um, Sean approaches the left. This is all very normal. These are all very strong moves. Um, one of the nice things about AI Sensei is you can set what level you want it to analyze for, and you can see where mistakes of a certain amount were made. Um, and you can see that, uh, at least at the Ford on level, um, over the course of this game, the AI said white made a total of about nine mis nine moves that would call a mistake. Again, mistake is very relative. If I put the slider down to, you know, let's say, I don't know, 5Q, <laughs> it says black made one mistake, white made two. Uh, if we put it back up to four on, it says white made nine and black made, uh, looks like 12 or 13 maybe. Um, but again, this, this is so subjective. It's so hard. And, and the AI is not humans, and the humans are not AI. So keep that in mind as well. <laughs> I play this nice pincer that helps uh, basically not only attack the stone, but also settle this group. Makes this stone a little bit harder to run out, in fact. Um, and we play Joseki. Um, and I so wanted to play this one. 
And in retrospect, this is the Joseki I should have played, but it's very, very close. I think both of these are playable. Um, if you've never seen this Joseki, again, this is a robot invention um, against the large extension from the corner, the two-space extension from the corner, black approaches, often white tanukis or white pincers. This is the follow-up, which is crazy, right? Like, that just seems wild. Uh, but it's a, it actually works beautifully. So first, let me show you the game. And then I'll go back and show you the other the other reality that could have happened. Um, we played this uh, very standard pattern here, um, but this should be good for me. Um, I didn't take advantage of it because I didn't play this move. This move actually is is the key move. And in this in this position, I was I was like, oh, well, Black will get this really nice position on the left. This is not that nice of a position on the left. Um, first of all, these three stones are much weaker than you might think, and second. This is this is all very reducible. This is only the third line. I have I have a nice reduction point here or here or here. I can attach here. I can even invade down here. <clears throat> and the whole time, um, Black doesn't really have time to deal with this because you can see sad face <laughs> on the three stones after White gets this point and has this pincer. These three stones are in trouble. Now, the scary part for this for White is that the corner is actually not 100% alive. <laughs> so depending on how this goes... Um, Black can make some threatening moves against the corner, and part of that is the reason why I played this. This is makes guarantees you know the corner full life. Um, it keeps the two stones looking very sad, um, but I didn't attack the the correct direction, so a little little mistake here, but still totally fine. Black plays there. The rest of this is kind of forced. This move, this move, um, this, this this Atari is very much forced. Um, I mean, not forced, but. Like you got like it's it's too big not to play it, um, but Sean's Im immediate idea to jump out is probably unnecessary. Where I don't like like now that Black got this point, these th well now four stone group is actually a lot safer. Black actually has a lot of Aji here against these two stones to use if White tries to attack it. There's no there's not a lot of gain here, and so we're gonna we're gonna. I, I basically get insta get into this really silly slap fight where. Uh, I don't know if it's like if it's like machismo or some sort of macho uh, attitude, um, but again, remember Sean's strategy of fight. You know, take territory, fight for the center. Sean at this point feels like okay, he's he's got some territory. It's now time to start moving to the center, and so that's part of just the ethos of his strategy. And you know, at this point, like I'm like okay, I'm like I have to respond to this if I if I want to capture these two stones, and I do because I still feel like I can attack. And if, uh, my reasoning is like, oh, if I get strong here, then I can invade over here much more easily. So I play this, is it six by six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six by seven move, sorry, on the board. Um, to really hammer him into the center. Not We should not be fighting for the center yet, but again, that's the star. Somehow we got into that little conversation. And again, Sean moves again to another sixth line stone. So very quickly, right around, what was that, move 44? Five, yeah, 44, 45. Um, both of us sort of like feel this pull to the center. Uh, and for Sean, I think it was, again, it was meditated, it was a strategy, and he was going to execute it. And I I was just like, what's going on? I think I, I, I feel like my opponent is making this very important for some reason, so I went along with it. Um, of course, we should play none of those moves. <laughs> we should be continuing to fill out the sides. So um, this move... Uh, for, I was actually very happy for myself when Sean made it because I felt like it made my two stones actually look valuable. Before Sean plays this move, I'm thinking, oh, he's just going to play over here, play a move like this, and I, what the hell are these two stones doing? Like, this is not territory over here. Like, I could, yeah, sure, I could, maybe I can make another six or seven points if I get a stone there, but taking a, a Gote seven points is n not a good idea almost ever, at least for the first 100 to 200 moves of the game. Um... And yeah, like what, what am I going to do with these two? Like I played them. They, they, yes, they help capture these two stones, but they're not doing much of else. Like the corner is safe. I don't need to be in the center right now. There's not anything to do in the center. It's pretty divided. Um, so, so I'm sitting here after this kind of just like, uh, feeling bad. <laughs> and, and I know these are very small mistakes, right? The AI here says it's like a point mistake and a two point mistake, but already like when you have an hour and a half a clock and you're playing as hard as you can and as serious as you can, you feel, you feel those mistakes. And that's the amazing, like, like go, I don't, I, I, the thing I, I, I struggle to explain to people who aren't go players 
is how much feeling there is on a go board, right? You're just staring at these abstract black and white stones, but oh man, like it is a very, uh, emotional, <laughs> emotional game in, 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 in richly emotional game, internally speaking, at least for me, I don't know how you play go. Maybe you're all robots. But when Sean plays this move, I go, aha, all right, these two stones now look so much better, <laughs> like so much better. And the reason why I felt like they look so much better is now, oh, Sean's not just taking territory. Like if he just took territory over here, it was very safe and very far away from these two stones. These two stones, it's too far away for an invasion. But when black plays here, now this thinness ha is exposed because I have strength nearby. When, you're, when your opponent has no stones nearby, you can actually play very fast. You can play very thin and not have to worry. When your opponent has strong stones nearby, you need to play slow. And this move, this move for me was like, ah, okay, now I'm not worried about the left at all. When black plays this move, I'm going to have fun in here. Okay, because this is just too thin, I have an extra stone there. That's how I felt about it. It's like, ah, my worries are, are, are not uh, founded. And uh, let's see, let's see, I don't know what the AI says. Yeah, the AI says this again, play, play low and away, take territory. Again, small mistake, right? We're just moving the stone a line, and a, or two lines and one line over. Um, but the AI says, oh, that's, that's, that's a mistake there. Um, so, yes, I'd be much sadder during the game with this, because I, I would, I would reg have regretted playing these two stones so much more. Okay, so here I'm like, okay, Sean really wants this, and you can see this is this he is executing his strategy, right? This idea, take take territory. You can see that in the left, the right, the top right, even the little bit of the top left. He has all his territory, control the center, and in this this move he he's kind of doing both, right? He's trying to build up the moyo as well as control the center, but doesn't really do either one well enough, and that's sort of the problem with it. Other than this, so I play this very standard reduction. Uh, the AI says, actually, just go in deeply. Again, this is too thin, so black can play in there. So my move wasn't quite severe enough, but, you know, at least we're talking about the right part of the board. <laughs> Again, now black can take territory, and I'm still okay with this. I'm like, still, like, hey, there's there's thinness in here. This is actually still hard for black to, to adequately defend. Um, in the meantime... Uh, I'm going to play a very standard old Joseki um, with the Shimari. Sean's going to follow. Um, we don't uh, in this in this case. Sean should just take, but he he um, he plays this move to really defend the corner. He's just a little bit too. He was just I f like I felt like he was just attached to this corner for some reason, um, like emotionally during the game, like. Uh, until later, you'll see this all. This all dies, but <laughs> but for right now, at this part of the game, like I could see, I could sense like no, he was taking his territory. Like like this was a this was an issue of like pride for him, and so he played a few mistake moves like this that are a little bit over concentrated and defending. And he could have played a little bit faster, but when you play that, that means I also get this Atari for free, and he should just take at this point. Like he's he's committed, um, but at this point he changes direction and he's like. Uh, no, okay, I've, I've, I've gotten this exchange, so I've sealed off the territory, I'm now going to try to control the center again. And it's this, he, he kind of self-negotiated against himself a little bit. Um, like, like he actually kind of changes direction a couple times. Um, let me put on the, the AI here. So, so after, I guess he played this move to defend the territory, but after this attachment, um, he the best deal for him is just to fight. He has all these stones. He has he has the advantage in this part of the board. He should just fight. But he's like, no, I want the territory. Even though two moves ago he was asking for the center. No, he should just continue with the center, like follow through the center. So he goes, okay, I want I want the territory. And I go, okay, great. Do you want the territory? And he says, yes, I still want the territory. I say, great. You want the territory? And even here, which he still gets territory, it's just not quite necessarily as much territory, but it's significantly better for the bottom uh, prospects. He says, yes, I just want territory. I go, great. Do you still want territory? He goes, nah, now nah, I want the center. <laughs> and so he's, he's like, like, like he has this dual prong strategy, but he can't quite decide when to transition from the territory mindset to the controlling the center mindset. And because he keeps 
negotiating with himself, like, oh, do I want it now? No. Do I want it now? Okay, yeah. Um, it becomes very inefficient. And remember, my global strategy was just take the best deal. Just look for the best deal. I just want to go into this thing as, you know, a, a Chicago securities, commodities, a trader, and just go, oh, wait, you know, uh, pig bellies are going for, I have no idea what a pig belly costs, pork belly. I, I have no idea, actually. I can't even put this in dollar amounts. But like, I can see that person selling it. That person's buying. Oh, I can make a deal here, right? Like, and get the get, get the best deal. That's my mindset that I'm trying to achieve here. Um, and so after this, he then instead of running this out and fighting again, fighting was not on his strategy list, right? It, it was it was territory control. <laughs> there was no f- option for fighting. So he missed, again, another opportunity to fight here, um, which would have been very good for him. And instead, he makes this other mistake to kind of control the center while making territory. And so if we go back up and look at the graph, you can see it's kind of creeping up a little bit. Uh, White's up to 8.2 points in terms of the lead. And uh, yeah, let me turn off the, the suggestions for a little while. Um, you can see this game, White turned this bottom that, that had no business being any sort of significant source of White territory into something significant. Um, this, you know, White firmly controls this bottom now, has Sente, um, all in, all, for not exchanging very much, right? White's got a sizable corner, even large corner in the top left, is safe enough at the top, has a little bit of prospect here on the right, uh, still has Comey, and you know, White's largest potential is at the bottom, amazingly. I take this Hane, which is fine. Um, again, really threatening to build this bottom. And all of a sudden, Sean's like, okay, I'm just going to... Now Now it's time to control the center. The bottom's getting too big. Play this reduction move. Uh, the AI would prefer something a little severe, but at least the idea is, is, is valid. It's close, right? But the AI says, no, no, you need to play a more severe move here, which I agree with. Um, still, running, running stones out or asking some questions over here, these are also all valid strategies. So if you're thinking more like, okay, now it's time to turn your attention, you're not wrong either. But this move is very soft. Um, I, I, uh, I, this is, this is probably perhaps my favorite Tanuki I played during the game where I looked at Sean Stone and I went, nah, like, I, like, I just don't care about it. Right. I'm safe enough over here. I'm safe enough over here. I didn't expect to get these. This is ter- as a large territory anyway. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't need to respond to the stone directly. <clears throat> and f- so I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to Tanuki. Like, like there's nothing Sean can really do here to me. Uh, so I'm looking at, you know, some other points of Tanuki. The one I choose on over here is over here, um, thinking that, oh, if I get here, then I can peep and seal in, make a large right, completely seal in the bottom right, maybe then counterattack this more severely than I would otherwise. The AI doesn't like that idea. It's too early. I need to, I need, I have some other things to fix in terms of shape specifically over here. Um, but that's still, that's still an idea or up here. For that matter. Um, I play here. Sean plays this. I did not expect this exchange. Uh, this was another mistake. I was like, oh, this is, this is too good for me. Now look at this, this right side territory is just, is just being built very naturally. Um, I play one more move. The bottom right's completely sealed in. I have a little bit of a connection. I can attack this stone. Um, but it's Sean's initiative and he has every right to follow up with this reduction move because I just ignored it. <laughs> so he plays this, these forcing moves and we play out the sequence um, and then here I play, I play, this is my, I think this is my first really significant mistake. I should not play. I, I play this timing in anticipation of Sean trying to make life down here and thinking, oh, this move might be useful to do something to play like this hanging connection or I don't know. Um, I tried reading out a few things and just decided it was useful enough to, to give it a whirl, but really not really shouldn't have no business playing it in part just because if this is going to live down here or try to live this descend is just a more powerful move anyway both against the corner and against this group so i snuck this move in it was wrong i have regrets <laughs> um and then i go back and fill in this this co-shape that sean makes the ai is not in love with making this shape this is the same move i would play in the game i think um, this is the most severe looking one, but the AI says this make double tiger, tiger's mouth, even though I hate the shape, um, it's worth the, the point loss, right? Cause white can sort of peep here and here. Um, but when white, if I guess maybe white should peep this side first. Yeah, I think so. Um, 
if, if black ends up with this shape, um, black actually has some countermeasures and is still going to attack this. So, um, yeah, and actually against this peep here, if we go back to... Oh, no, it does want to attack this side first. Okay, neat. Wow, AI is like, no, no, fight this first. <laughs> but let's assume we fill in here to continue. It says this is a loss, yeah, because black's not going to care about this stone. Um, but yeah, I'm fascinated here. Let's, let's do a little digging. What if white plays here first? Oh yeah, black just ignores. Black just seals in. Beautiful. That's some AI, uh, just very AI cl clarity. Very simple. Yep. All right, so anyway, Sean plays here, um, which gives me the idea, like, oh, okay, he's going to be... Um, uh, like, like this is this is severe. Okay, so like, like this is now my attention is firmly drawn here for a while. <laughs> uh, I play, you know, just this nice connecting move, get the stones out, build a little bit of center. Um, again, Sean, he kind of changes direction again here instead of playing like any of these moves. Um, plays comes up with this move, which felt real wrong in the game to me because I'm like, oh man, I'm really happy to have this point. And he, he, he's now insisting on the center. The problem when you do this is now I have two more stones over here against this thing. I've got these two stones, I've got these two stones, there's a thinness here. The territory that he worked so hard to defend has now been breached just a little bit. So now I have some more Aji in here. And this white group totally safe, like super strong. Sean can attack this and he does. Uh, which is fine. I, you know, the AI says don't start with a peep. I think the AI wants us to make a shape in here. Um, but he plays this great move at 83 to basically make shape, threaten to cut. And <clears throat> the last, at least, at least now I can say, okay, at least his moves have been consistent <laughs> for the last, few, in, in terms of global strategy for, you know, controlling the center somewhat. The question is, is it, was it worth it? right now. And the AI is like, no, it's totally not worth it. Like, this is too hard to build. I still have these two stones way out here. Um, this isn't that much of a weakness to exploit. I'm totally safe over here. Um, Sean's points have basically been unchanged with very little gain in the last 30 moves on this board, maybe even 40 moves, um, where basically, you know, Sean, he already had this. He had a couple points here. He had a couple points here, and he had a handful of points here. And the, the score has not changed. Meanwhile, um, if we go back, that same number of moves or even more, all of, all the top is still, you know, the same white. White here, something white here, some, a little bit of something white here. But now white has extended this white further, and white has actually shored up, you know, solidity at the bottom. So here I play, this is, this is a mistake, and oh man, we looked at this after the game. So I was like, oh, I should just play this and just fix it. This is not the right way to fix it. And so... Uh, I challenge you, find the better move. It's not that hard. This is a this is very much a a Q a Q level problem. Find the best response to 83. And if your guess was just to play here, you'd be correct. I should absolutely just play here. This fixes the cut, no problem. <laughs> Uh, this also helps build the right, and, it, and perhaps even more importantly, it helps deal with this stone, strangely enough. So when I play this stone, this is just a little bit too... It gives, it gives black too much initiative. As you can see here, black gets some forcing moves, and now can activate that stone. And this stone here is useful, at least in terms of this fight. So big difference not getting that point. Um, I know the AI says it's only a 1.5 loss. I'm pretty sure it would... Hold on, let me make sure that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely says that's the correct move. But, uh, no, felt so much bigger than 1.5 points. <laughs> um, here we go. Sean's finally activating this stone, and he comes in and invades. It's a little bit too premature. Um, but... <laughs> He, Black is finally playing some active moves on this board uh, to try to try to take advantage of that center that Black has uh, reinforced. Um, this move, I didn't realize how bad bo this exchange was for me. Like, I don't need to actually play 94. Um, and so uh, before I just submit, I can actually just cut <laughs> and say, okay, look, I have a million liberties. 
you have to prove to me that these two stones can live or do or do something first because uh let's literally let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve about twelve liberties that you have to you have to short <laughs> so this is very submissive and uh I'm sad about it <laughs> but in the game felt okay I was like okay well I've got to build this so it wasn't as bad as I thought uh, we make these exchanges. Um, and then we're going to talk about this for a while. So Sean's finally moved out these two stones, but it's not, it's not quite, it never quite gets to the point of a threat. He can't quite get like a second threat that's strong enough to make use of it. Um, fixes here, which is okay, but you know, like, like you already got a good exchange here, right? Exchanging this for this. So I know it feels tempting to want to fix, um, but but we already know how much you're saving here. Actually, it's not entirely true because there's still a weakness here. But um, yeah, like this this is what should be being talked about right now. You're making this top group's life a little bit miserable. So this is this is kind of poor timing. Um, so in this case, I try to now attack or counterattack. I should just come up here and just and just keep this black group going that way, um, which will then weaken this group. Should be the overall strategy. But I attack it this way, looking for um, some to expose some weaknesses, as well as a way in the center. Because now at this point, I'm actually a little bit worried. <laughs> if you, Especially after this, this uh, strong triangle move. You can actually see that without too much more effort from this position, black actually has something going in the center. And the, the transformation is complete. That, that overall strategy, what are we, 100 something moves? Yeah, 100, 100 moves exactly into the game. And Sean's overall strategy of, all right, get some territory, control the center, has been executed to its fullest. The AI does not like it, <laughs> as far as the AI is concerned. It's like, this is this is uncontrollable, um, which is why you see such a large point lead for white here. During the game, I didn't know this. I actually thought the game was much closer, and Sean did too. Um, and there's a point coming up here that we're going we're gonna to see a major exchange where, uh, by my count and Sean's count, we talked about after the game, we're like, this is an even game. <laughs> like we were both like, like this, this for us, this was the most tense moment of this game. Of like, of like no one knows what's going to happen. Like it is dead even. It's going to be like, I feel, I felt like a half point game. The yeah, eye still says white gets, you know, has a little bit of a comey ish size lead. Um, but I think when you see this part of the game coming up, you'll, you'll see how scary it is. Like, you'll be like, Oh wow. Yeah. This is, this is like, this is a highly competitive game. Very exciting. Okay, so I poke at this shape point. Not the right shape point. Should just push up here. Um, but uh, Sean doesn't really. Well, we, we well, let's say we bumble this. This is just this is just a comedy of errors. Um, first, Black should exploit some more weaknesses over here. Doesn't quite do that. I should now change direction to come up around this. Um, instead, I kind of an insistent, but this doesn't quite work that well. <laughs> um, I was reading all these sequences where 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 uh, white gets a snapback kind of shape, which is fun, but I need another move over here to really make it work. And um, instead of fixing any of the shapes, Sean plays another, like, we're just way too creative. This is just, we're just an art class right now, you know, painting abstracts, I think. We're each reading, like, these, these, like, trick sequences to try to figure out each other's shape moves, and no one is just fixing anything blatantly, <laughs> um, which is unfortunate. Uh, but here, I, again, I take away the shape. I should take it away this way. This also results in the same kind of snapback sequence. So, for instance, if you're looking at, like, this move, uh, white can block here, and, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, that just, that just, oh, no, that doesn't work at all. Sorry. Uh, wrong snapback sequence. I have to take there. Um, okay, this actually works fundamentally different. Never mind. <laughs> fundamentally different if black pushes through. Yeah. Disconnect. <laughs> uh, where's the snapback sequence? Maybe it was there. If we play here, here, and now black pushes up. Uh, it's it's never yeah it never works at this point. There's too many short liberties. Never mind, never mind. I'm reading it from earlier. I'm I'm remembering from my game, my game brain, like before this shape got played. Never mind. All right. Anyway, I play here to really just make sure. I can capture these two stones and have not a not a worry, um, but this just lets Sean sort of again seal more of the center. I come out here. Um, the good news is I've captured. I've actually made more profit 
And by capturing all this, that's, this means this stone has significantly less Aji. And so this territory is much larger than originally anticipated. Um, even if Black tries to, to connect here, for instance, right? There's just nothing there. Um, so we can basically count these four, five stones as dead. 10, 11, or sorry, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is, this is like getting close to a 20 point group, believe it or not, which neither of us really counted accurately. <laughs> I did not realize that this little humble top group could get so large. Um, but regardless, Sean's like, aha, I'm making the middle. I'm going to continue making the middle. Plays this very strange move. And again, I felt this attachment, uh, the same attachment, like emotionally, that my, that he had to this bottom left. I'm like, oh, he has he has feelings for this center group. He's in love with this center group. Okay, let's use that to our advantage. That is very useful information. And so he plays this very dubious questionable move, which lets me play a bunch of dubious questionable moves in response because I can feel that emotional contact or context. The, this, is, this is very much a situation of playing the opponent, not the game. I do not recommend this, but here we are, all right? Tournament go where you know your opponent. And so the AI is like, yeah, do some stuff over here. And I'm like, no, Sean is a boy who is in love and he must be punished for that love. <laughs> So I, so you're just going to see a, just a string of small mistake moves by White, like when 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 Black when Black plays moves like this, it is it is I want this. Like there's nothing else this stone does. It is I want this. This is my compromise to you. This is my my love poem. This is my sonnet. And I go, Sean, that is beautiful. Love is a beautiful thing. Prove it to me <laughs> again and again. And so I haunt here, and instead of fighting. Sean's like, your love is as deep as the ocean, or my love is as deep as the ocean. And I go, oh, but what about the mountaintops? And he goes, oh, my love is higher than the highest of mountains. And, and again, I say, again, these are all terrible moves. I'm just, I'm just asking, I'm just, I'm just making him soliloquy about his love for the center, right? He should be tanuking. He should not be responding here. He should be doing all these other important things on the board. But he is just, he is just a guy who, who knows that there is only one important thing in the entire world, and that is love for the center. Uh, so, uh, you know, how, is, your, is your love deeper than the lowest valley? No. Or yes, yes, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I've lost track of my poetry here. <laughs> and I just keep asking, how many is this move? One, two, three, four. I've played four crappy moves. <laughs> to just make Sean prove his love of the center. Is that five? One, two, three, four. Here comes number five. <laughs> Do you really have love of the center? Look look at all these point losses, right? You can see the AI is, is getting dragged up here. It's just kind of upset that no one's playing an important move and just trending more and more white little by little, just, just eking this out. And... Uh, it, it, look, Sean built a center. Look at this. This is this is beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say let's say it's up to about thirty points maximum, but there's still things in here to do. So, it, and there's this move to reduce. Like like white can still reduce it more. Um, and it's not nothing. Like black built thirty points, but uh, over here, if with one more move. Uh, I'm, I also just accidentally essentially built one, two, three, four, five, like about another 10 points is sort of accidentally <laughs> that I can take whenever I need to, or whenever a 10 point moves accurate. Um, these two stones got a lot stronger. Everything, everything over here got a lot stronger. I got this free move here, um, which again, potentially expands this and threatens to cut this group off later. Most importantly, uh, like all for free, like this is for free. And so, you know, it's still, it's still potentially up to 30 points. It's still scary. But I also already kind of made that accidentally over here in my mind. And so as long as, the, and I guess this too for that matter, right? This also ballooned up to 20 points. <laughs> um, you know, just between this and this, I can, I can make, you know, 40 to 50 points quite easily whenever I need to. And if you cancel out the right-hand corner for Comey, uh, if I play here, this cancels out the, the bottom over here. This group is covers most of 
this territory over here, not quite all of it, but I have Sente. Um, so in my mind, like, okay, I have Sente, the board is kind of evenish. <laughs> of course, I had no idea, though, that the, the AI was giving me a plus 24-ish point lead. Um, but I was like, okay, this is, this sounds like a nice time to just, just take a few more points, really expose the weakness here. Um, because if we just, if we just go into point taking mode, if I get to play here and I can come back and play down here, like I actually have enough points to, to just eke out a few point win. Like in my mind, I'm like up by a couple points <laughs> after, after you cancel out all these territories. Um, this is a bad move. I have, I have, I still have this. I still have this. There's still a thinness here. I can play more. And I also have this push and cut or just cut directly, uh, which you're going to see coming up. <laughs> uh, and now, uh, Sean, <laughs> instead of, there, there's some Aji here that he should be taking or fixing. Um, neither of us really saw the, how good this move is, uh, during the game. It's short celebrities on these two. So I really can't push in very far. Um, he plays this move. I don't find the right, he, this is not the right timing, but I don't find the right response to it either. I kind of freak out here a little bit. <laughs> in the game, I play this peep just looking for some way to, to punish this. But the right move is just to play this. Isn't this, a, this is just awesome, right? What a nice response. So let's take off the AI suggestions. Yeah, just check out how, how nice this is and how dumb it looks. Like, it's bo it both solves the problem, but also looks really dumb. Um, <laughs> that, again, it keeps this connection to there. It makes Black's... Uh, connection here harder. It's still connected. It's still okay. Um, but white gets to clamp here and um, black, ha black can't do much. Like, has to come back and fix. And so that's it. That's that's the end. <laughs> um, and if black does this, then white gets sent and come back over here. And so this is this is a major, like, like yes, black reduces, you know, up to 10 points here. Maybe captures an extra stone, so you know we'll say this is this is like a ten to twelve point gote sequence, and that's the problem. Gote is that white comes out of this with the next move, whereas the way I played it in the game, I took this peep here looking for Aji. I play this move here, so I can link up to that later. Um, I play here. We make this exchange. I make this Atari for some shape reading problem reason. Um, I separate. Black captures this stone. I capture back. Um, I also come out of this with uh, Gote. Um, or sorry, Black comes out of it with Gote. I come out with Sente so I can play the next move. But I'm not actually 100% li alive. Um, there, Black can uh, Atari here and then Atari here. So I'm actually not 100% safe, even though I kind of come out with Gote, which is why I'm playing another move down here. I'm like saying, hey, do I have to, do I really have to? Live Gote. This move is huge, though. Like, I should still play it. Um, maybe not right at the moment. Actually, I bet the AI says play it right at the moment. Is that what you said? Yeah, the AI is like, yeah, just play here. <laughs> Make sure the group is alive. There's no more moves against it. <laughs> They're serious. And it's worth a lot of points. I should just play there. But I'm creative. <laughs> I go over here, I'm like, I don't feel like coming and living. Um, so even though white loses about the same, maybe a... <laughs> between, let's put it this way. White gains a little bit of points here and loses close to about the same amount. So in terms of territory, it's actually not that different than the previous variation. But the difference is that black now has follow-ups. And uh, in the previous variation where I just make that empty triangle move, it's clean. Like, it's just over. Like, there's not there's not anything else left to do. White's totally safe. So, big difference. Um, when I play here, black takes Sente to, to shore up this. That's a very disappointing move to me in the game because I had plans now, right? This is... Um, uh, you know, like I, I gotta, I gotta find some, some options here. Um, this move turns out it still works, which we're going to see later. So foreshadowing, um, I make some exchanges here just to annoy this. And, um, it, it, it makes me a second eye. So now I'm totally guaranteed, which I'm actually kind of happy about. Um, black finds this Tesuji and then, uh, I find the right point. <laughs> like, okay, make these exchanges. Let's go in. And let's just, you can watch, however, these exchanges result in a major loss over the next, uh, how many ever moves white's going to lose about 15 points. Um, and I thought, I thought these were good for me in the game, like much better. Um, at least it, I like, like I, I felt like I was doing stuff after the game. Sean was like, no, nah, you weren't doing anything. He's, he, Sean was like, oh yeah, I was really happy about all these exchanges. <laughs> um, so here, let's show you what I sh what line I should have done is I should have made this really hard to see empty triangle. <laughs> but 
black should cut. Um, I guess, yeah, white can make these exchanges, which is fine. Um, but then come back here, and, and I'm eyeing this move, and this is the move I don't quite see, is just make another empty triangle here. Uh, which black has a hard time, if, if black just blocks this, <laughs> uh, th these, sto these two stones can be rescued. <laughs> All right, if black blocks, now this is threatening to capture, and white's just out. <laughs> um, so that's that's probably the, the best way to do this. Uh, in the game, I get something very similar, but it's not. it doesn't keep black nearly as much on the back foot. And I'll show you what I mean. So when I play this way, number one, if I'm going to give up these two stones, uh, notice I'm going to give up two stones now instead of one. Uh, in the game... Uh, Sean covered there. He should just fix his defect here and just let these two stones struggle out um, But you know tries to capture the whole thing um, Again same thing. I should push here directly. I play it the much more inefficient way and make this cut and We play out this pretty much forced sequence at this point Here this is a little interesting wrinkle. This, yeah, this is a six-point loss, which is still hard for me to believe um, Because it works out so to look so similar um, you'll see that white gets to capture the whole corner. And, uh, yeah, black should take this just for the Aji and force white to play down here. This is good Aji for, for black later. Um, you know, just for corner endgame stuff, but, uh, he saves that for later. So right now you can see that our, our advantage had kind of diminished. At this point, I felt like, oh, now it starts to feel like I have, I have... Um, or, or now it starts to feel like there's an even game <laughs> right now. Now it's like, oh, I'm counting this. I'm going, oh, this is going to come down to the wire. This is really close. Um, even though the eye is like, no. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let me turn off the suggested moves. Um, game's not quite over yet, but this, this was, this is sort of the last big violent thing to happen, I guess. I guess, no, that's not really true. I, I, we always have this potential of violence up here. And that's really what we're talking about. All these, all this next sequence of moves, both of our eyes are on this group. And um, this move is huge. Like, Sean should find time for this. I don't think he ever does. Um, we make these exchanges. I'm playing these moves again with the, the assumption that I'm going to attack this. And so I'm just playing some preparatory moves. Um, yeah, AI still says, no, this is big enough to win. Just play there. Um, but I'm like, okay, no, we got some eyes on this thing. It's going to play there. I'm playing here. I'm still eyeing this peep as a Tetsuji. Uh, makes this exchange, which is fine. Like again, he's just he's just making sure he has eyes and doesn't need have doesn't have any problems. So he's just taking all the pokes he's entitled to. This one, however, is a little dubious um, because he doesn't need it. Like he's alive at this point. He can either connect out or make eyes. But he's feeling he's feeling me want to go after this, so he's feeling a little defensive. And I'm going to still continue going after it. <laughs> Because this is my plan at this point. So I'm going to take some more points. And then here he correctly tanukis, although not to the correct point. Um, he should either take this stone first, get this Aji, and then play here, or just play here. Um, but, uh, so this tanuki's good. I get my little extra few points of advantage. You can actually see how that 15 point... Um, territory, or sorry, thir close to 30 point territory in the center has shrunk now to less than 10. Um, I felt great about that, I f but I did have to give up these four stones. So actually, I guess it's way more than 10. All right, I lied. <laughs> Black got compensation here <laughs> in the uh, the fighting that ensued. We play out this sequence. I, and I, I take the ad advantage or take my take my momentary moment here to play this really big 186. The yeah, is like, no, no, you still got this Tesuji you should play up here. <laughs> like this Tesuji is still good. It's still just a good move to have on the board. Like even if you play it and don't follow up on it. Um like you I, like yeah exactly. I can I can still come back and play here. This this move actually gives black um some shape problems, right? In terms of in terms of playing endgame up here. Which we're gonna see later. More foreshadowing. Anyway, this is what I'm trying to eye. I can't quite make it work, but the eye is just like, just make the exchange now, and, and it'll become useful when it's time to make it useful. Uh, we play out this. I come back here, and Sean plays this mistake. Yeah, Sean, Sean should totally be 
um, playing from this direction. This is not ter a terribly strong way to invade your opponent. Um, but it's okay. We play out this a little bit um, to, to put some pressure on the corner. Um, Sean takes that stone. I take some more endgame. I play this one, which is not as good as that one, but kind of induces Sean into making a mistake up here. So, like, th like my sequence is crap, okay? Let's just acknowledge that. This is not a good way to defend. Um, but Sean plays here, <laughs> which is wrong. And I take this Atari and this Atari, and then I have this wedge. After this whole sequence, you can see this, this whole long stick doesn't have a whole lot of liberties. And so Black has to be very careful. And so I get to make this little poke in Sente. I still have that in Sente. And I have this move to fix it. And this is the move that induces a pretty huge endgame mistake um, for this point in the game. Uh, Sean plays this first. And then, yeah, it's a, according to the AI, a 5.2 point loss. And it may not, it's not obvious why this is a 5.2 point loss, but it is, sure is magical. <laughs> and it all has to do with this point. And when Sean played this, I thought for, I don't know, 15 seconds, and I was like, no, you don't get to play that. <laughs> you have a defect here. <laughs> and so after, after I got this Tesuji, uh, I felt, I felt, confident, like, okay, I'm going to win this game. Like, it might be the thinnest of margins. And it's really not the thinnest of margins. It's back to, like, a 15, 20-point game. Um, but I felt like, okay, how, like, like, I don't know how my counting is just so off in this game. I think I was maybe overestimating the points that Black gained that I gave up here. I don't know. <laughs> but whatever it is, I was like, oh, no, no, that's that. You can't play that. And if you ever want uh, to practice your Tesuji... <laughs> Uh, to Suji reading specifically, this like you can just practice this out with this response and see if you can read out the sequence right now while I take a sip of my coffee. So here's the sequence. This white stone is very annoying because number one, it can cut. And if it cuts without black responding, these four stones just die. If black responds, white can actually link up to the left by playing here. And uh, the hardest move to read out, I think, is what happens when black plays at 217. White has this diagonal move, and so this is the move that I that I found after looking at this black uh, Hane kind of cross-eyed. And uh, if black connects, you can see this is just sort of a famous Tasuji shape. Um, even though white's group has two liberties and black has two liberties, black can never approach white, or it takes an extra, it takes an approach move to approach white, I should say. And so this is just a famous, uh, you know, side of the board. Um, diagonal Tasuji shape you have to look for. And, uh, yeah, that's... Black can't play that way. You can see the unhappy stones. Uh, actually, what I think the AI wants to play there is, pr is probably the best move. Sean plays there, which is fine. Oh, the AI doesn't want me to play there? What crazy sort of AI do you want? Oh, you, AI wants me to make these exchanges first. That's fine. Whatever. All right. So we play there. We take the stone. And boom, uh, I like like the whole point of this Hane was to expose this as a weak point, as a weakness, to poke here and poke here. After this, even if I don't connect, there's never a weakness here, because black takes, I take back. So not only did I take a few extra points away from black, I fixed my weakness in Sente. <laughs> and that's that's amazing. So now I get control of the game. We play out, you know, I don't know, the rest of things here. Um, at some point in the end game, I, again, I'm on the clock, and so I'm not quite... There, there's a couple of missed moves in the in the game record, or out-of-order moves, out-of-order end game moves. Nothing that makes a difference, though. And uh, the rest, you know, white cruises. I think it ended up being an 18, 17 or 18-point win as the end of the game. So, uh, you know, <laughs> like I said... <laughs> Uh, both of us counted the game wrong. Both of us thought it was much closer than that. As it got closer to the end, end game, and Sean was taking a few minutes to look at some of these end game moves, I did get a better count. I was like, oh, okay, I'm not any danger whatsoever. Um, but definitely during this little post exchange down here and trying to attack this, I thought I thought we were going to an even game. Um, so that's how bad I am at counting, apparently, which is fun. What a fun thing to learn about yourself. Uh, anyway, after the game, we hung out, we talked about it for a little while, 
And uh, I know Sean, he expressed a lot of frustration with the, his, his global strategy, his meta strategy for the game. Um, yeah, he, he, was a, he, was a, he, he thought he had a great strategy against me, which again was take some territory, control the center. Like he had done some homework and, and figured out that's, that's the best way for him to, to win. And so he was quite, he, was, he just felt really bad, I think, after the game because he, his, he executed his strategy and it didn't work. <laughs> uh, and again, my strategy was try to be more like water, right? Take, take what's available. Don't, don't try to force anything. Um, I feel like a few of my moves were dirty <laughs> in the sense that I, like I had an emotional uh, sequence of moves, both a little bit spurned over here as well as in the center, because I felt like, oh, my opponent are really, really the emotional moves, I guess, were down here, and again, over here, throughout here, because I could tell Sean really wanted it, and so I was able to take advantage of that, right? It's very much the, you know, if you want something, you're going to have to pay for it, and so to some degree, the best way to get better at Go is don't want things, like, just take the best deal, be level-headed, and just see what's the, the best thing that's on the board for you. And I know that's a real general tip to give y'all, but, you know, it's amazing how often that is the key <laughs> uh, to, to winning more games. So anyway, uh, I had a great game with you, Sean. If you're watching it to this point, thank you. Um, this is a very memorable game for me, and I hope it was for you as well. I look forward to, to playing against you again in future games and congresses. For those of you who, who made it this far through the review, hopefully you picked up on some things. Um, you got a good a good handle for for what <laughs> mid level Don games are like at the US Go Congress. And uh, you know, hopefully you're inspired to go there and play some of the most serious Go that you've ever played. <laughs> <laughs>